Good afternoon and welcome to the Dibble Institute's bonus webinar for January 2023. I'm Kay Reed, the Executive Director of the Dibble Institute, and I am thrilled to welcome you to learn more about Love Notes and Relationship Smarts Plus updates from uh, the source herself, Marlene Pearson. Uh, next slide, please. A few uh, little housekeeping uh, tips. So if, if you aren't getting any sound, which you can't hear my voice, read this and you can take care of it. Um, I do have a question for everybody who's on here now. Would you close find your hand and please raise it if this is your very first Dibble webinar, your very, very first Dibble webinar. Okay, well, we have a lot of, excuse my expression, old hands here. So welcome to you who are new and uh, welcome back to the rest of you. We're really pleased to have you here. Uh, this is meant to be geared to people who know a little bit about or use or know a little bit about Love Notes and Relationship Smarts Plus. Um, and if we will be sending you links if it's new to you and, we'll, and you want to see more about the basics of the program. Um, there's handouts on this uh, that for you to download, handouts, sample lessons from the new Lo Love Notes and Relationship Smarts Plus, two recent studies, and then a little guide to what's new, changed, and updated uh, in, the, in the two programs. So please avail yourself of that. Um, next slide, please. So because so many of you knew, we're gonna whip through this. You know our founder, uh, Charlie and Helen uh, Dibble. Charlie, what I, what I think about him most often is a guy who said, I'll make a difference. I can do that. And that's all of us, right? We come into the office or we work with kids every day and we say to ourselves, I can do that. I can make a difference. So uh, in that legacy, we, we appreciate Charlie. Okay, next slide. Um, the, so what's new, the, those of you us who know Dibble know who we are, but I did the math a couple of weeks ago. And if you divide 119,000 young people by the number of business days there are in a year, you come up with the astonishing number of 500 new and different young people every day are getting the benefits of the Dibble program. And that's not because of us who come from the dibbleinstitute.org email, it's because of all of you who are out there doing the good work with young people. So we appreciate you. I mean, I can't, it's astonishing for me to think that today, 500 kids, tomorrow, 500 kids, and that's a very conservative estimate. So thank you, thank you for all you do to make this happen. Okay, next slide. Um, we, you know, we we want to successfully navigate, help young people successfully navigate their intimate relationships. And I would just draw attention to two of the handouts: our very recent studies, random control trials of uh, both Love Notes and Relationship Smarts Plus. I'll give you the headlines. At one year, Love Notes participants are 46% less likely to be pregnant or have caused a pregnancy, 46% at a year. Mm -hmm. Relationship Smarts Plus, at three years, the girls, not the boys, but always, oh, the girls are two plus times more likely to have used a condom the last time they had sex. That's at three years. It's astonishing. So the good news is when you use these materials, you can be really uh, confident that they're going to make a difference. So we're really pleased that this area of intimate per personal relationships and teaching skills around those, are, we're really starting to see the power of this theory of change. And those of you who use the programs, you know it. So thank you for being on the team. All righty, next. Um, and by the way, I'll be answering uh, questions at the end of Marlene and in the and in the interim if they're directed that something I can answer I'll be getting back to you so you know we're big fans of research and so I don't think I need to say anything more except go read those studies they're really great and astonishing okay next slide please um, we're big fans of stable safe and nurturing families this is what Charlie was all about he saw how uh, relationships that were on the rocks or not healthy or safe or stable would, tr would change the trajectory of the young people around him. And so uh, that's our aim here. It's not only a young person's love life we care about, it's their potential, their current or potential future children that we care about. We really see this as a larger child abuse prevention, perhaps one way to frame it, um, or just child, just making it better for kids. So uh, that, that's what we believe. And finally, um, we we believe, so next slide, um, 
Marlene's doing the slides, FYI. Uh, <laughs> you know, relationship education is for everyone. I take relationship education classes. Um, I give them away as uh, engagement and wedding presents to my uh, nieces and nephews, uh, lucky kids. Uh, GLBTQ plus youth can take classes. Um, Hispanics, the study in Georgia was all about Hispanic and African-American youth taking these classes. So there's not just one flavor of people that relationship education benefits. It benefits us all. And so hopefully sometimes in our newsletter, we'll put in relationship education tidbits for you. Sometimes we put that as a professional, sometimes we put them in for you as a, as a person uh, because we think it's a really important part of life. All righty, next slide. So it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce to you today, uh, Marlene Pearson, who is the author of both Love Notes and Relationship Smarts Plus. Uh, Marlene was working at her uh, college, Madison Area Technical College, and noticing that despite the fact that her young people were getting all these advantages of pregnancy prevention and mentoring and tutoring and on and on, um, these, these young kids would come <laughs> back often pregnant and had to leave and drop out of school. And she thought, you know, there's got to be another way and maybe we should focus on their relationships. So uh, she very astutely and adroitly uh, combed the research, learned the programs, and really thoughtfully came up with this innovative approach uh, to help young people get smart about their love lives. This is the, as you can see, the fourth edition of Love Notes, the fifth edition of Relationship Smarts Plus. We're committed to continuing to keep them up to date and current. I mean, you know, kids won't listen if it's the, the, uh, the hairstyle that was in six months ago. So we really know that for you to reach the young people you want, we need to keep them current and issues change. So for instance, we have trafficking in here that we didn't have before. So with that, I've said enough. Marlene, thank you so much for coming today. Well, thanks a lot, Kay. Thanks a lot for that introduction. <clears throat> and uh, I'm really happy to do this and really happy to see um, so many people. Um, some people I just I totally remember and, and um, recognize. And uh, anyways, uh, we have a lot to cover. And as Kay said, this is really, um, you know, it's only really 45, 50 minutes, right? So, uh, you know, it's really focusing on um, the assumption that you know about love notes or relationship smarts. And uh, so the focus here is on the changes. Um, and by the way, uh, you, you can, you know, we can um, link you up to webinars where I actually go more in depth for anybody who is really new and doesn't really know those programs. Okay, so um, we're just gonna plow right in right now. Okay, so why the new edition? Um, well, it's been five years, so it's time, it's time. Um, and so my plan for today is to first off uh, start with <clears throat> excuse me, giving you a, a kind of a general overview, you know, of those changes. And then secondly, um, I will go and sort of drill down a little bit to, you know, highlight some of the most important um, changes, updates, new content. Now, as you know, or maybe you don't know, I wrote Relationship Smarts first, and so Love Notes is an adaptation of it. Um, and so uh, the two programs, with the exception of the first few lessons in the very beginning, are, are really you know, really the same in terms of concepts, in terms of skills and activities, although, you know, language and framing and all of that is sort of developmentally just a little bit different. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's go to the next slide. Oops, just a minute. Let me go like this. There we go. Let's go to the next slide right now. Um, Let's do the big picture overview. Why the update? Okay, first of all, just research, plain old research, right? Youth risk behavior survey updates, CDC, sexual health updates. Um, on to, uh, there's been newer research on the success sequence and also the role of digital technology, social media, uh, internet pornography on teens' lives and relationships. So it's just, just that is one reason. Um, secondly, we've really, we're always trying to improve activities and, you know, also to, uh, you know, all of us that train, um, and, and of course myself as a trainer and a writer, um, you know, I teach it all the time too. So, and then we hear from people like yourselves who've been using the program. And so we've been able to, uh, we're always thinking of ways to improve the activities to make. And so what we've done, you'll, you'll notice there are some activities that uh, we've tried to add more movement, uh, <clears throat> more action, uh, more participation, and uh, we feel that these improvements will, you know, engage youth even more and deepen discussion. And uh, some of the, uh, there's a few activities that we've really kind of redesigned a bit 
to use a more strength-based approach. And um, I'll describe those in a few minutes when I get to specifics. Okay, the other thing is that uh, we don't call it a workbook anymore. It's all called a journal for both curricula, okay? Um, and, um, you know, we started this uh, not too long ago, but I don't know if everybody knows this, but you can either get the hard copy or you can get it in a uh, fillable digital download for students' smartphones. And there's some advantages to that, and there's advantages either way. Okay, so having said that, the journal, uh, and this now really pertains to Love Notes, uh, we have uh, we have really redesigned uh, the Love Notes journal. So it has a clear background coloration and clear fonts, because uh, some of it was hard to read um, before, I think. So we tried to make it a little clearer. And then some of the journal applications, of course, uh, we've also looked for ways to, can we streamline them for greater clarity? Uh, can we edit them for inclusion? And uh, also, you know, where we need to, you know, update them for research. Um, okay, so that's um, for the journal right there. Uh, now, the other thing you'll notice is that, uh, you'll notice that there are some uh, new images, um, you know, uh, contemporary, diverse, inclusive images. You'll see these in the PowerPoints, you'll see these in the journal. Uh, and along with that, you'll also notice that some of the language, pronouns, scenarios for role plays activities um, have also um, been tweaked a bit for inclusivity and, and some new content. Um, some new scenarios have been added, some have been edited, some have been deleted, um, or whatever. Um, another thing is that we do have um, a few new videos and we've replaced some things out and um, some new music. Uh, in terms of the trusted adult um, connection activities, uh, we've improved some of those and um, at the back of each lesson there are reproducible, um, you know, the handouts. Um, typically it's half a page and then you can, you know, for your convenience. All right, now, so I've talked about research. You know, obviously you have to update programs for research. Uh, but also programs really need to evolve in other ways because, you know, there are new um, important and emerging topics that really have a bearing on the goals of, of, of this program, these programs. And so, um, you know, we have incorporated content um, that's important um, that was not in the original Love Notes study, the EBP, um, nor maybe also to in the original um, Relationship Smarts. So um, I'm going to just kind of quickly um, run through some of those new kind of topics um, that we've put in, sexual assault and consent. And uh, by the way, we did have uh, some of this in the 2018 um, editions, but we've kind of deepened it a bit with the discussion of now digital consent. Uh, we've also added, as Kay said, um, a section on sex trafficking prevention. Um, and you'll find that in the dating violence lesson. Uh, we also have a very, very new and a very unique approach for addressing um, internet um, pornography from what originally appeared in the Relationship Smarts Lesson 13, okay? Um, and by the way, that lesson was called uh, Teens, it's called um, uh, Teens Technology and Social Media. And um, for those of you that are here for Love Notes, uh, you know that we took that lesson and we put it in the appendix of Love Notes, the appendix, and, and you know, just uh, made it supplemental. But of course, I think we all recognize how porn is really, really influencing many teens and how they learn about sex and maybe even a shaper of expectations on sexual behaviors. Um, and so we thought it was really important to um, include that. Uh, we also have some new content on mutuality as it relates to everything from like sexual decision-making, consent, and um, sexual ethics, which I'll talk about more. And related to this, uh, we have some new content on essential conversations. Um, how to know if two people are really on the same page. Um, and very importantly for love notes, we've added content on teens' lives and relationships in the digital age, um, as well as you know, we've updated that in Relationship Smarts. So um, I need to say uh, a few more words about that because that's um, pretty important. Now, <clears throat> for those of you that are using Relationship Smarts, you know that we have a very robust final lesson, Teens Technology Social Media. 
so in and then also too in the 2018 love notes uh, we did include that lesson as i said in the appendix um, so here's a couple of important points i want to make about this first of all that entire lesson um, that's from relationship smarts uh, we've redesigned and really kind of streamlined it all uh, because you know again there's been more research uh, we wanted to sharpen um, the focus on some key areas and we also wanted to em employ more engaging ways to present the material and then we also wanted to tap into youth's own creative ideas uh, for how to manage their um, relationship to digital technology um, you know with that lesson you know that all that content around that you know we just want young people to be informed uh, in ways that it, um, this can impact um, our lives, our relationships, and you know, the goal is to really help them make informed decisions about their use, their relationship um, to the tools, all the tools of the digital age. You know, they're they're wonderful, but also <clears throat> they're you know, there's some you got to make you got to make some decisions about uh, how you use them. Okay, so the second point I want to make, and this really refers to those of you um, who are using Love Notes is that um, we thought that this is too important a topic to just sort of tack it on into the appendix as supplemental, which a lot of people kind of read as you know, optional. It's just too important. And so what we've done is we've taken some core content and we have integrated it into four different lessons of Love Notes, uh, specifically the two communication lessons and the two, um, sexual decision, sexual planning lessons. And again, I'll give you some more details in a few minutes. Okay, so one last item. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I meant to show that slide. <laughs> Those of you in Relationship Smarts, you're familiar with this. Okay, so um, the second um, item I really wanna talk about is that, um, and again, this is really um, geared to those uh, using Love Notes right now. Um, we have a whole new layout for Love Notes. Um, no longer, like, and first of all, I, I'm gonna address the people who are uh, doing the EBP, the evidence-based uh, program model. Um, you know, in the past, you've always had to have a little EBP binder and then the big thick manual, and you had to, you know, kind of flip back and forth. It'll, it would say, go look in the manual for more uh, information here, get these resources, get these activity cards. Well, no longer, we have one, manual it's it's all there okay now on the other hand um you know what we've done is that we have clearly marked uh what was in the study and uh what is what we would call supplemental right for, for those of you that are doing ebp and so this is what it looks like we've flagged it with a shaded box can you all see that uh it's a very very light shading so it doesn't get in the way of reading it uh but we wanted to be, we wanted to um, preserve the whole manual, but then also for the EBP folks, making sure that they knew exactly, you know, what was in the study and um, what um, was not, okay? Um, so, and by the way, see that there's, there's special PowerPoints that go with that supplemental content. And those PowerPoints, those, those PowerPoints will be right in your slide deck for the, that lesson. And, um, and uh, you can, you know, so if you choose to use them, fine. Uh, if you're not going to, uh, you can delete them or move them to the back um, of your slideshow, you know, for later reference. Now, of course, those of you, there are a lot of people out there um, who are using Love Notes, uh, you know, the, you know, you're not delivering the EBP model. Um, and so why am I mentioning this? Because everything that's in shaded boxes, you know, it's never been supplemental, you know, you've been using it. Uh, it's never been supplemental, but I mention it so you understand why we have that there, because um, we're putting it all together. Okay, now at this point, uh, let me go through some very uh, more specific examples, um, like of the changes, of the new content, and of some of the updates. Now remember, um, there's a whole lot that's the same, you know, just it's sort of tweaked with language and scenarios or whatever in the two different uh, programs. Um, so I'm going to, so a lot, of, almost everything I say, a lot of what I say is, is really applying uh, to both programs, okay? Uh, and if not, um, I will let you know. And so if you notice, 
like sometimes you'll have love notes on the slide, sometimes you have relationship smart, sometimes I put both in if I didn't crowd the slide too much, uh, but I'll let you know. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing is that uh, y'all know in both programs, uh, we have a uh, part of a lesson that really deals with examining the past, past experiences, including you know, patterns growing up in families. Uh, and you know that the uh, major activity we do, it's called sorting baggage. Uh, we now use just two bags, one positive, one negative. We eliminated the could be either bag. And the reason is because that really comes out naturally in the discussion. I mean, that's kind of what you want. You want people to really deepen. Okay, so is it more positive? Does it operate more positively, helps a person or causes more challenges? And, you know, as you really give their different points of view, then it really comes out naturally that, you know, that it really kind of depends, right? And um, so anyways, uh, we think it drives more discussion and better discussion because otherwise it's too easy to just everything goes and could be and we don't really flesh out, you know, the positive and negative and, and the situations that hmm, could be either way. And we also, um, <coughs> excuse me, have added some examples to assist the instructor uh, in this discussion, um, you know, and how um, youth in the past have, you know, stuff that you might think is really positive and they'll say, oh no, this is very negative. So anyways, we've given you some examples there to kind of help you. Okay, now um, this, the next one only uh, refers to love notes and that is lesson three on expectations. There's a focus on expectations. What we've done here is we've taken the maturity and character journal applications and we've moved them into this lesson. And that's because um, maturity and character can really influence, you know, you in thinking about your expectations, right? Um, and so we've kind of moved the journal pages there and talk a little bit about how that can really influence um, expectations. Okay, now let's move on to um, this lesson the principles of smart relationships. And by the way, um, it's both, you know, so what I'm saying right now is applying to both. Uh, what we did here is um, we kind of redesigned the presentation of the principles and the activity, <clears throat> you know, where you, uh, in, in this one, because we wanted to, we wanted to have more movement. We wanted to have more participation and more discussion. And so um, what we do here is that um, the difference is that every every youth in the room gets a card. It's not just you pick out 12 and, and do it with 12 or 10 or five or whatever. Everybody gets a card. So you might have, you know, three or four people read the card and everybody, you know, oh, is this smart, not so smart, whatever. You know, you do that a little bit. And then um, the instructor presents um, the seven principles. And then the next phase of this activity is we uh, have provided you with some templates for wall signs. So seven, there's seven wall signs for each principal and you put them around the room and then you ask um, you know, each youth, okay, look at it, uh, which principal do you think it applies to more? And they get up and they move over there. So then you have groups, right? And then they share with each other um, their scenario. And then, you know, cause, which is really good. They're discussing and they're talking, they're sharing the scenarios. And then their group decides, uh, they pick one, could be smart or not so smart. Um, to present to the class, and then we talk about it. So anyways, um, that's been working really well, um, and, and it's a little more action. Okay, similarly, we tried to, uh, we're adding a little more, uh, a small but very useful change. Uh, right now, I am in the dangerous love dating violence um, lesson of love notes and relationship smarts. So uh, what we did here is a very small change, but boy, it really has made a difference, okay? And, you know, in this activity, you have those flags, right? And we've always in the past um, trained people to do a kind of a team competition, you know, two teams, right? <clears throat> and so what we do now is that we give every, every young person um, a flag, um, but actually, you know, really... Um, you could do that, but what we did was just something simple. You, you know, you take a red card stock, four pieces, and so every every youth gets a white card and, and a red card. And so then as the scenarios are read aloud, you know, everybody participates, you know, by holding it up. 
So it kind of keeps everybody involved and everybody kind of focused and more discussion with more people. And uh, by the way, um, I want to give a shout out to our Puerto Rican friends um, who I, I saw them on the list. So I don't know if you're out there, or you're going to watch it virtually later. Um, but when I was in Puerto Rico um, and uh, they were, you know, there was a training of the second crew, uh, they just so brilliantly had this. I, I couldn't believe it when I saw them take out like, I don't know, was there 50, 60 people in the training? I can't remember, but they took out <laughs> hundreds of these flags. But so we, we just made it easier with the little squares. Uh, so anyways, thank you so much um, to our friends in Puerto Rico, because uh, that has really, I think, improved it. Now also in this lesson, oh, by the way, we also have a new video on um, teen dating violence. And I think it's really pretty good. Um, and then we also have more visuals in the slides to help you talk about different types of um, uh, dating violence. Uh, in this lesson, we also have the sexual assault, okay? And <clears throat> it appears in this lesson. And also in this lesson, we have that new section on sex trafficking prevention. And so the emphasis here is really on, you know, we're trying to really raise awareness of how is it young people get drawn in, you know, that whole grooming process. And, um, you know, we also want to, you know, really help young people understand that social media is it, it, it's really ha happening more and more. It, it, by and large, online. Uh, we try to build some awareness of how perpetrators, you know, they really look for youth who are vulnerable and especially, you know, ones that are expressing it online. And we also have, you know, tips for reducing risks, uh, websites, where to go for help. And we have um, more resources that we suggest for teachers in terms of background and all of that. And then I think to reinforce all of this, um, we've redone the pages in the journal. And by the way, you can see on the left that's from Relationship Smarts because that's black and white, that journal. And then on the right is color that comes from Love Notes. But these pages are literally exactly alike um, in Relationship Smarts and in Love Notes. But I want to um, focus your attention to the page on the right, okay? Because uh, what we've done here is, you know, before we just focused on physical dating violence. And so now we have these kind of three areas, you know, signs of greatest danger, physical, um, sexual violence, and then trafficking. And then if you see the box there, uh, you know, we have all the websites um, and, you know, thoughts there. And uh, we put in that really nice, everybody is worthy of kindness, love, caring, protection, respect. And then um, we've added to this, you know, who is a safe and trusted adult I can go to? We think that is like, really, who could you reach out to? That's really, really important to have some discussion around that. Okay, so now on to the next slide. And uh, this, by the way, just applies to Love Notes. This activity is not in Relationship Smarts. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and this is the high cost slide activity. And we've just, uh, we've just improved it a little bit. Uh, there's not a lot of difference, but just asking, you know, these three questions as they get into their groups, or you can also do this just as a whole group, right? You can pick out one or two slides. Um, so how well did they know each other? What was the slide? Were there any red flags? And then we go back, you know, we discuss that, you know, and, and then you go back in time. You know, what steps, what information, what decisions, what could they uh, perhaps have done differently? And by the way, um, we've also added what well, we, I think we've uh, tweaked um, some of the language uh, in some, some of the same. And then we've added two on sex trafficking, but we've also provided some kind of discussion points um, for the instructor um, to help you on this. And we also have some really good resources we put in there too for you. Um, and uh, I guess I guess this would be, I also wanna say with the sex trafficking in general, a real shout out to the folks um, down in Miami uh, with Trinity um, uh, who've uh, really um, a lot of consultation with them, uh, big issue in Miami, well, everywhere, but okay. All right, so now the second part, um, okay, let's talk about the success sequence now. And, uh, <clears throat> this again is in both um, curricula, okay? It's in both curricula. And since the last edition, there's really been new research. Even the research that we really um, uh, were relying on, um, uh, Wendy Wayne 
uh, Brad Wilcox, uh, they just came out with a, a brand new, uh, you know, set of a data that is even like stronger. And then also too, Mathematica uh, did another um, kind of uh, uh, review and uh, analysis. Um, so anyways, what we've done is we've kind of, uh, you know, re redone this one a little bit. We now call it pathways and sequences towards success. And what we do is we use the term milestones uh, to present that really a certain number, a certain combination and sequence can make a difference, can really increase one's odds of success. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is the Mathematica um, research their data on the success sequence, they added family stability. Very interesting, family stability as measured by um, two uh, parents, adults in the home, uh, few or no relationship transitions, you know, breakups, you know, um, divorce, few, um, none or few. And thirdly, um, thirdly, um, the relationship happiness and satisfaction between the two parents or adults, which I think is really interesting. But anyways, um, so what that means is, um, you know, if children are part of a person's vision, then boy, this is where sequence, that sequence, you know, commitment, we're in us with the future, partnership, marriage, right? Before baby really, really matters or before second baby. Um, uh, Cause you know, we also have, Lots in there that speaks to young parents uh, expecting and parenting youth. Okay, um, now also uh, in terms of the success sequence and pathways, we've also added two. Now these, this is supplemental, it's optional. Um, they're short, I think they're five or six minutes. Um, there's one, it's called the success sequence, her story, kind of focuses on a young mother trying to get back on uh, track. And then um, there's uh, his story, which focuses on two men. Uh, one is a um, father who's trying, a uh, single father trying to get back on track, and then a, a teenage um, young man who is really determined to follow um, the pathway and the sequence. Okay, so now um, I think we're ready to move on to the communication lessons. All right. Now, um, first of all, all the skills, everything is is you know everything's the same. We haven't. We haven't really tampered with this hardly at all, okay? Um, uh, so you'll, it'll all look the same to you. Now, the only exception is this. Uh, when we get to hidden issues, remember how we had that um, old um, video of Jimmy and Elizabeth? Really, really kind of outdated. I think they even have a phone with a cord. <laughs> um, anyways, we retired that. Uh, and so what we've done is uh, we've taken a clip from the series Blackish, and we have a clip uh, from This Is Us. You can choose one or the other. Uh, maybe you've got another one, you know, that that really gets at hidden issues, and that's fine too. And we give you some really good um, discussion prompts and ways to um, get young people to think about. Well, is there something else going on behind these arguments? And it's also it becomes a really nice way to also review. Um, some of the communication danger signs, bad ways of complaining, uh, and things like that. Okay, now um, another special word um, about the communication lessons. Okay, now um, as as I mentioned um, earlier, <coughs> excuse me, we've taken some of the content from Relationship Smarts on. Um, you know, social media, technology, and all of, you know, the, that lesson 13. So we've taken some core stuff there and we've put it into love notes. And so where we first start to see it in love notes is uh, in this uh, first communication lesson, okay? And so everything I'm about to say uh, about that content uh, will also, um, you know, it's, it's, it applies to the updated relationship smarts, okay? So anyways, in the very end of that first communication lesson in Love Notes, uh, what we do is we um, begin to examine our online lives, okay? And we start with texting because that's really, texting has, uh, you know, <laughs> largely replaced a lot of face-to-face -face and voice-to-voice communication. And so what we try to do is 
uh, draw young people out, um, explore some of their ideas, right? Like, um, you know, when is texting really useful and convenient? Uh, and, and when is more direct, voice to voice, face to face? You know, when is it better for that? And we also talk, you know, we really, you know, kind of explore tips, share tips for respectful texting. Um, you know, this is important because, I mean, there's some young people, they are texting their friend or their partner like, oh my gosh, a bazillion times an hour expecting immediate responses. And also, as we know, it's also uh, used by some as a, 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 a kind of a mechanism of control, of keeping tabs, of even stalking somebody. So we think it's, that was kind of important to talk about that. And then the next thing uh, that we have now, in this is in the second communication lesson of Love Notes. But again, what I'm about to say appears in Relationship Smarts, right? Um, as those of you who've been teaching relationship smarts, you know that this section, you know, constantly connected lives is very meaty, okay? And we've uh, tried to update it a bit. Um, and uh, in line with that, we do offer instructors a summary of some of the newer research on social media and teams. It's, it's a lot of stuff that's happened in the last couple of years in terms of research and findings. Um, and so also too, we've tried to make it a little more interactive, less didactic. And so um, one of the things we do, this will look familiar to the Relationship Smarts folks. Um, you know, we, we look at how does communication happen? How do you get a message out? Um, it's not just words to convey meaning, right? Uh, we're also looking at, you know, how does our increasing reliance on the technology for communication, how does that affect social and emotional intelligence, you know, we know that the ability to read cues is essential to building social and emotional intelligence. And that requires voice to voice, face to face to pick up on cues. Um, then we try to really pull from young people. What are their thoughts about screen time? You know, some types more beneficial, some types problematic. You know, it's much better to pull from them. It doesn't matter how many hours a day. And I think that last question is pretty important. So are there some things that a heavy user might be doing less of? What, what's it crowding out, okay? And then we kind of use those hunches. We kind of use those hunches to then explore, hmm, what are some of the potential links between um, heavy use of social media and mental health, um, and particularly uh, depression, body image, suicidal thoughts. Um, and then finally, um, we really try to engage youth, tap youth. What are your ideas? Uh, and, you know, I've, I've been, I, I worked on this with some you know, young people here in my area. And I was just sort of amazed with, it's like, you know, I think a lot of young people do realize it's kind of, they're, they, they are really spending too much time. And uh, they, um, some of the young people I was talking with just had some just amazingly creative ideas. And so, um, and again, it, it's a question of, do you want to be in control or be controlled? Because those algorithms are so addictive for all of us, all of us, right? And so we really try to tap their ideas there, okay? Um, now let's go to uh, sexual decision-making. That uh, comes after communication, right? In, um, excuse me, in both curricula. Uh, and so um, anyways, uh, <clears throat> so we have, it's uh, lesson 11 for love notes. And of course it's lesson 10 uh, for relationship smarts. And again, the concepts are pretty much the same. There's some developmental differences, but it, uh, the concepts are mostly the same there. Um, and the goal of both of these lessons is really, you know, um, really these are the sexual decision-making lessons. And it, it's what a lot of the public health sex ed pregnancy prevention programs don't have, which is really helping young people to think more deeply about, hmm, what is, what is the timing? What's the context for sex that is meaningful for me? Um, and so that's, as you know, that's what we're trying to do. We want them to know that, you know, they really have the power to decide. They don't have to just follow what they think is expected or perceive everybody else is doing. So let's talk about the updates. First thing, we retired the old music video. No Life Jennings SCX, okay? Uh, we have a different way, you know, to, to, you know, we're trying to get at the same thing. We're trying to really get them to think about uh, a, a sort of a central question, which is what makes sex a positive experience? You know, again, 
uh, we want um, protective behaviors, we, we want delay or we want, um, you know, uh, a reduction of uh, risky sexual behaviors uh, or delay. It's not because sex is bad, you know, it's like, hey, you know, what's the situation or context that might make it positive or meaningful, whatever. Um, and so uh, anyways, what we do here is we start out with an activity, um, which is, uh, it's kind of a thought experiment, but it's really kind of fun and interesting. It's a hypothetical couple that say they have a great sex life, uh, adult couple, okay? So what contributes to their happy and satisfying sex life? What's, you know, and so they come up with, you know, well, what is that relationship like? How do they treat each other? What are their personalities like? Um, and, and, you know, it's a way to really um, get into, you know, common context for sex, relational, casual, you know, it's a, it's a way into it, right? And so from there, we go to, um, I think what everybody's, you know, which we need to do, uh, let's, let's look at their beliefs about the common behaviors of what, uh, hookup culture, hookup culture, you know, just the culture around you, hookup. I mean, not, not all kids are hooking up, not all teens, not all, you know, young adults are hooking up, uh, but there is a hookup culture that does have a, um, a big influence on, on young people. Um, so anyways, we use, a, we use a fun kind of poll there. And, um, and so into that discussion, as, as they give their thoughts on this, we can weave in um, some of the um, findings um, from research and surveys um, of young people. Um, uh, on <clears throat> the hookup culture. Um, and that, by the way, is the way we kind of, you know, introduce this. And uh, so anyways, this leads into the next activity, which everybody who knows about the two programs is familiar with, and that's the six parts of intimacy. You know, it's more than a physical thing. Um, so anyways, what uh, that is the, the, essentially the same, except for we have added another, an additional inclusive scenario. So we have Alyssa and Chrissy, uh, not just Jesse and Ben, we have both, okay? Uh, and then after they sort of analyze these couples um, and we ask some questions and discussion, we have more inclusive language for those discussion questions. Uh, something new is that um, we've introduced this idea of mutuality. Um, that mutuality is, you know, not only important in developing intimacy, I mean, it's about being close and connected, right? Mutual. But it also raises the issue of what more and more people are talking about today, sexual ethics, sexual ethics, respect and caring for another person's feelings, experience and expectations, not just your own. Um, you know, we do know from the research um, on adult, you know, you can't do research on teenagers on this, but you know, on adult females is that they're far more likely to have physical pleasure inside a caring, healthy, kind relationship where two people can communicate um, and there's trust. Um, now, of course, most of our research on this, excuse me, comes from, uh, uh, you know, uh, male, female sex, but I, you know, I, it's pretty likely that partners of any identity or orientation, you know, who display concern and care about each other's experience and feelings, they can communicate, they are probably more likely to have positive experiences up with any level of physical intimacy. Um, now, um, after uh, we discuss, um, uh, we see the film either toothpaste or all falls down, uh, we have increased our um, attention to the benefits, the benefits of deciding. Um, before we were emphasizing more just, the, well, you know, we do talk about the risks of sliding, um, but um, we're talking more now about the benefits of um, deciding, you know, again, going along with trying to be more strengths-based uh, asset building. Okay, um, also to what's new is that, now this pertains to love notes, um, but also, um, well, let me first of all say this, um, in love notes, uh, towards the end of our activities on intimacy, uh, we explore some of the risks of you know, intimacy online, you know, online sharing of sexually explicit messages or images, okay? And so it really made sense to take what, you know, we were addressing sexting um, in Relationship Smarts in Lesson 13, and by the way, we've really improved that, um, you know, because so many stuff is happening just online. Um, and so we're trying to present sexting 
in a more you know sort of non-didactic way and by the way i mean the research shows uh, most youth believe it's really no big deal and nothing bad will ever happen and so um you know uh so you, you you know i think we've really improved uh that section and we thought it was really appropriate to add it here to, to love notes uh we offer tips on you know protecting yourself reducing risks uh, try to raise awareness on sex torsion and revenge porn which um is um a lot more than we'd like to believe is, is happening um and also in this section is where we really discuss digital consent uh, you know, really, what does consent look like online? What does it look like online? Is it really possible? You know, when you think about the five sort of tenets of, of consent, you know, once you hit, you know, send, you you lose control. I mean, is it really reversible online? Um, is it always honest and fully informed? Uh, so anyways, it's, it's a good kind of discussion, uh, I think, to have. Because uh, again, you have to look for kind of non-didactic preachy ways and, and get discussion going and, and raise questions. Okay, all right. Now, as you know, in um, the end of that lesson in both curricula ends with asking youth to draw their line, you know, on physical intimacy and to explain why, uh, you know, like in love notes, like when, with whom, under what circumstances would you move your line? Uh, in, in both um, programs, we ask, well, what are the risks? What are the benefits to where you set your line? So we've added something new to this, which I think really strengthens it, and um, to new content. It's called Getting on the Same Page. And what it does is it focuses on essential conversations to have in order to know if two people are really on the same page about uh, what they're engaging in, um, meanings, expectations, when you consider any level of physical intimacy. And, and so uh, I, I'm pretty excited about this. I think it really offers youth, uh, you know, practice on, you know, clarifying their intentions, their wishes, and it introduces, you know, this idea that these are some essential conversations. You should both answer these questions and share them with each other. Um, and I think also, too, it really deepens their reflection on um, the presence or absence of mutuality, being on the same page, no matter, you know, in terms of what makes physical intimacy um, positive, uh, positive experience, pleasurable or whatever. And by the way, I'm not just talking about intercourse or sex, but kissing, hugging, you know, uh, caressing, whatever, you know, I mean, anywhere along the line of physical intimacy. So now in Love Notes, we have it in uh, the journal. It's a whole page in the journal. And in Relationship Smarts, it's a handout, okay? And there, there are some developmental tweaks um, in, with it, with Relationship Smarts. Okay, um, I've got about five minutes left, and that's good. So let's move on to um, the sexual um, health and planning lessons of both programs, okay? So we have a new video clip, How Do You Get Pregnant? Um, we also have, uh, uh, we've added a little section on the importance of testing for anybody um, who's sexually active. And, um, you know, this comes out of the CDC website for where to find fast confidential testing. Uh, the, t the peer teaching activity uh, where they have to, you know, teach their STI um, to the whole group. I think we've improved it a bit um, with uh, clear instructions and we've expanded the array of multimedia options for presenting and giving a message about um, their the STI that they have to talk about. Okay, now uh, this is kind of exciting. Um, so uh, as you know, in Relationship Smarts, we had, well, we had a section on pornography. Uh, well, we've totally redone it, totally, totally, totally. Um, so in Relationship Smarts, this is in lesson 13, and in Love Notes, we put this at the end of Lesson 12, okay? So what we do is we use a song um, uh, uh, by Billie Eilish um, from her new album, and uh, along with a very extensive interview uh, that she gave uh, where she talked about the impact of viewing mainstream porn since age 11 and what it had on her. And um, Anyways, this interview is with Billie Eilish and, of course, her brother Phineas, who, um, you know, uh, does music with her. And everybody knows about Billie Eilish, right? And she has a lot to say about this. It is phenomenal, this uh, interview. So what we've done is we've taken sort of images of her performing 
and quotes from the interview, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, and, and research, and, and we've woven in some of the research on porn, um, internet porn and teens and, and well, just some of the research we have, uh, we've woven it sort of together. Uh, and, and I think um, from what I hear out in the field, um, it's really going over well, and it's really far more engaging. Uh, and by the way, we, this is another area where we have a big hefty sort of background on the research and some research uh, to give teachers, um, instructors some background, facilitators some background. Okay, uh, so anyways, uh, what I'm going to do right now, uh, just very quickly, uh, 30 seconds, uh, I'm just going to show you a few of the slides. Excuse me, something's falling down here. <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> okay, uh, I just want to give you a feel, okay? Uh, and, I, and, and by the way, these slides are very... First of all, this section has a lot of slides. Uh, the slides are all very heavily image laden, but I think it really helps you um, kind of go through this material, which may not be you know, comfortable for um, a lot of people. Um, anyways, so what I'm gonna do, I just picked out a few and I'm just gonna go pop, 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 and I'm gonna click through them just to give you a little taste, right? Um, uh, here she's talking about consent, um, you know, and then we can put in some research here uh, here, you know, a letter to do things that she should have said no to. Uh, again, more research, um, uh, you know. Uh, so I'm just, I just want to do this very, very quickly because I have uh, one quick more lesson to tell you, one lesson more to tell you about. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, there's lots more. But the final slide uh, is really sweet because at the end of her interview, uh, she really talks about where she's at today. She's older. And she is in a much healthier place, and a much healthier place. Um, and then this section really ends with some very compelling questions for discussion about the media you consume. You know, um, you know that deals with um, sexual issues, right? Um, is it joyful? Is it mutual? Is it safe for the body and the emotions? Is there equality? Is there respect? Honest communication? Ongoing consent? So, anyways, I think that we have really, really improved that, and I can't wait for you all to see it. Okay, lesson 13, the, fi the final one in Love Notes, second to final one in uh, Relationship Smarts. Okay, the biggest change here is that we took some of the key activities and we redesigned them to emphasize a strength-based approach and also to be sensitive to content that can bring up big emotions. So for instance, um, in the first section, uh, we now have it as a child's wish list. And we asked them to think about um, a child infancy, you know, young child uh, to a teenager, you know, what really, uh, what do they want? What do they need? What helps them grow up, you know, healthy, happy, whatever. Um, and, uh, and then we get into that whole discussion and we link it up to the pathways and success sequence, you know, how might these really help a parent give those things? What about, you know, how would a healthy relationship help? When we get to the father section, we're using uh, Brian Nearest uh, 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 <clears throat> song, Back Where You Belong, which again can bring up uh, some emotions. And so what we've done is we've uh, put in, I use this all the time in my teaching, um, and I think it works really well, uh, you know, a moment of silence for talkbacks, you know, a thought or comment I had, a question that came, and then they jot it down. They don't even have to say it or whatever, anonymous. Um, you collect them and, and you learn a whole lot about, you know, and, but again, if it, and then, some people want to share after that, but it, it offers some space, some safety um, to process um, this, okay? Um, and then also we have a new uh, film. This is totally optional supplemental because it's, you know, it's like 15, 20 minutes, 15, 60 minutes, I think. It's really good. You might want to watch it yourselves. You know, you possibly could just let them know about it, the students. Okay, this is the other big change, child speak. You know, remember before you take the pieces of advice, you know, my parent or parents aren't following this and, you know, this is how I feel and, you know, poor little Jason and all that. Well, you know, we still read Jason like, you know, as an example, if your parents don't, but uh, instead uh, we've turned it all around. Okay, you're, they are, your parents or parents are following this piece of advice, right? Um, and so uh, it's, it, it really has kind of changed the whole thing. So it's really more asset building. So I, I think that's really good. Uh, same thing with Lily's letter, rather than mom, what are you doing? Uh, you know, you're drinking, you're doing this. It, instead, it's just the opposite. Hey mom, I'm in here and thank you so much for not drinking. So all the content's the same, but it's reframed. Uh, by the way, that's in both um, curricula. This one is only 
uh, in love notes and we've done the exact same thing there just kind of reframed it a bit in a you know positive uh, and then the final thing is my success plans we've added a page on my relationship uh, uh, to technology and social media and some very pointed questions and we do that in both um, journals uh, and now just relationship smarts with the values auction in lesson two um, we've added a uh, silent auction because sometimes people do will not say publicly and it's really interesting if you have the time to compare so we give you some instructions for doing that also too i forgot to mention lesson one pressure situations we've also tweaked some of those and and made them uh, added updated them and more inclusive and then when we get to cyberbullying we have found um, some new um, videos that are really really good short really short ones that are really really good so you might want to look at that and so at that point i am done and um uh kay are you coming on right now here i am <clears throat> great great work <clears throat> excuse me um so we've been answering questions all along there are more about uh questions about research and questions about other things not questions for you so but if you have any other questions for marlene on the way out we're going to send you a survey and you're welcome to complete those and and we'll uh, have marlene answer those questions so uh, this webinar and the slides with it along with the five handouts and apologies that the one handout isn't working um, on the differences uh, will be available on our website by by friday for sure so you can go under webinars and then you'll see where you can find today's webinar and th that's where it will be. Alrighty, next next slide. Do we have another slide? Yes. No? <laughs> Are we good? Yay. So we're excited that um, <clears throat> to be back on our regular second Wednesday webinar schedule. So the second Wednesday of February is February 8th and we'll be having a presentation from uh, Kelly Luckett. Um, hello Kelly, I think you're on this webinar. Um, of the program she's leading at the YMCA in Louisville. And what's really interesting about what they're doing is that they're using a teenager who's in a, I think it's a teacher training program, but they're using teens to teach the programs uh, to their, under adult supervision to their <clears throat> fellow students. And we know that teens, uh, you know, listen so well to their peers. So we're thrilled to have her come, please sign up. Um, it's gonna be a great webinar. So, um, so Marlene, what are you most proud about in the changes and revisions that you've done? What am I most proud about? Um, well, I guess maybe maybe two things. Um, uh, I guess one is, you know, just, <clears throat> you know, some of the uh, ways to make um, the activities and presentation um, more um, strengths-based. Um, I think that's really important, and uh, also some of the uh, some new ways that we've you know tried to even get more interaction, um, more action, uh, and also I guess you know uh, really um, just especially well this is really true for love notes, um, you know that we are just you know we're putting you know the content from you know life and relationships in the digital age right into the program. I just think it is so important. And even those those of you doing the uh, EBP, as you know, uh, you can add, you can't subtract. And of course, you have to get um, approval uh, from your project officer. But I just don't even know how we could uh, really teach about, um, you know, relationships uh, without integrating it in with uh, this whole digital age. And um, and also too, I'm, I I really think this uh, you know uh, pornography um, it's having um, huh, pretty big influence and and uh, some people say it's the new sex ed um, for teenagers and um, I think uh, I'm so excited that Billie Eilish gave this interview and and um, it's really allowed us to it, it's very rich and it's really allowed us I'm trying to think what else I don't know <laughs> I'm just right. so someone asked about how you could know that this is still a, a program that you could teach and stay fidel to the EBP program. And like Marlene said, what we've done that's a really big change is that now if you order Love Notes, it includes the EBP program that's clearly marked what is the content for EBP and then the rest of the content, like so if you wanted to cover trafficking or you wanted to cover porn, it's in there and it's in one place. So you don't have to flip back and forth. So we're really, and it's less expensive than buying the other way. So, you know, everybody wins. So we're super excited about that. 
Yeah, no, it's very, it should be very easy to follow. If you want to do exactly what they did starting in, what was it, 2012 or 13? I don't know. When did this study start? Was it later than Marlene, that? You got it. Okay, so one last thing is um, if you'd like to see a review copy of Love Notes 4.0 or Relationship Smarts Plus um, 5.0, go to the Dibble website under our programs, click on Love Notes, and click there, and you can, you can say get a review copy. And we'll be happy to send you a 30-day online review copy of, of either or both programs. All righty. Well, thank you so much, for everyone, for attending. And we'll see thank you next month.